I'm standing out here in the rain and now that fall is here in full force, I doubt that I'm gonna be able to pick any figs that are ripe and, and perfectly ripe that taste good. So it's time to do my top 10 list for 2017 in terms of figs here in the Pacific Northwest, zone 8B. Okay, today is a special day because I've never done this before, but uh, I'm gonna start doing it now because I wanna talk about the top 10 figs every single year from my garden. Um, you know, after doing all these reviews, it makes perfect sense to rank them and um, rank them in order. As far as scoring, I came up with my own system. So everything is based off of top 10. Um, 10 being the best, one being the worst. So in terms of taste, there's one through 10. In terms of sweetness, it's one through 10. So a really sweet fig around nine would be like a Peter's honey. I think this white Kadota that I had a few years back was terrible and it was bland. That would be like a one. Um, and then in terms of size, I have them between 10 to 20, uh, sorry, one to 10 grams would be considered a one. 10 to 20 grams would be considered a two. So that's how I have ranked them in terms of size, in terms of grams. And then uh, as far as productivity, uh, I based it off of fruits per branch. So let's say there was four fruits on a tree, but there was four branches, four divided by four is one point. Let's say there was one branch and the two fruits on the tree, two divided by one is considered two points. And then so on, so on, so on. So based off of that, I came up with my top 10 list and I considered cold hardiness and productivity as well as taste into my list here. Okay, so let's start with number 10. That's the Grantham's Royal. Uh, the Grantham's Royal, I had a score, I'm looking at my phone here so that way I get it right. A score of 25.5. Taste was 7.5. Sweetness 6.5. Size was 8 at 77 grams, which is a big Breva. And then productivity at 1.5. Total, I had 25.5 for the Grantham's Royal. Now, the Grantham's Royal wasn't the best tasting fig. However, it was certainly the most unique looking, the prettiest looking Breba that I've seen ever, downright. It had pretty stripes on there. Um, and then when you cut into it, the shape of the inside of it looked like an, a heart. Um, I've never seen that before. Such a pretty looking Breba. Um, as far as taste, it ranked right up there with Desert King. And for us in the Pacific Northwest, Desert King is a very good fig. Um, except that it had a certain kind of uh, hint of, I wouldn't call it spiciness, but it had a hint of something else, um, something more exotic that I would compare to kind of the West Indies, West Asia, and um, it made it very unique in terms of flavor. Uh, so that's number 10, it's the Grantham's Royal. Really liked it. Number nine was the Kathleen's Black. Now Kathleen's Black for me only had 19.5 points. Now, uh, that was due to the fact that it wasn't very productive for me. But in terms of scores, I had taste at 8.5, sweetness at 7, size at 3 at 22 grams, productivity at 1, so one fig per branch, and then total was 19.5. Now, Kathleen Black to me, because I've had so many black figs that taste like strawberry jam, it was unique, I was expecting it to taste like strawberry jam, um, but it didn't. It tasted like strawberry jam brulee because there was a hint of caramelness that I really enjoyed and it made it very unique in terms of taste. Uh, it had a perfect amount of sweetness. The taste and flavor combination was really good. The size wasn't huge, um, but I really liked the fig. It, it, was, it was unique compared to a lot of other figs that I've tried this year. So. Kathleen's Black at number nine. Okay, let's move on to number eight. That's the Desert King. The Desert King came in at 25 points, so slightly lower than the Kathleen's Black. 
This is a two crop crop fig, except the first crop is the only one that ripens ideally here in the Pacific Northwest. At taste at eight, sweetness at seven, size at seven at 61 grams, and then productivity at three. So three figs per branch. That varies a little bit because Desert King can be quite productive. This is based off of my tree. It's gonna be different for everybody else. Total came in at 25. So the Desert King is a staple here in the Pacific Northwest. It's a very large fig, uh, productive and very reliable. In terms of taste, it is super slurpy when it's perfectly ripened. Um, it is actually the favorite favorite fig for everyone inside of my family here. Uh, in terms of size, flavor, taste, um, it's like kind of a more juicy strawberry smoothie versus like a strawberry jam when it comes to the Desert King. Really like that fig. Uh, I'll probably plant a bunch more trees in ground here because who can't have enough Desert King here in the Pacific Northwest at number eight. Okay, moving on, number seven. This is the Floria. I had Floria coming in at number seven. Total points, 25.6. Um, it's a one crop fig, taste at uh, point score of eight, had sweetness at eight, I had size at three at 22.6 grams, productivity at 6.6. .6. Now, literally there was like about six, seven figs per branch on this, thing, on this tree. Total at 25.6. Now in terms of flavor, and it's not the best tasting fig out there, however, because of its productivity and the fact that it starts ripening really early um, towards August and then all the way through until like end of October makes it a great fig. Uh, I don't know if they'll do great in ground here, but I'm gonna test that out uh, because I have a feeling that once I have a Floria, either in a bigger pot or in ground, I'm going to be eating Floria all summer long. That to me makes it a real winner. So Floria at number seven. Moving on to number six, Tacoma Violet. Now Tacoma Violet has a score of 29. Pretty good in my book. The reason why um, I've ranked it so high was because of a number of reasons. So let's, let's look at the score here. It's a one crop fig uh, and it's early and it also produces all the way until October. Uh, taste at 8.5, sweetness at 8.5, size at 4, so this thing was, uh, I guess, closer to 40s and 50s in terms of gram. Uh, productivity at 8, so I had a, a branch that literally had 8 figs on it, um, and total at 29. Anyhow, so the, the Tacoma Violet, for me, interestingly enough, um, grew in the greenhouse all year long because it grew roots down into the ground because they didn't have it covered, but because uh, the greenhouse, greenhouse was built over a raised bed garden, there was a lot of nutrients in the soil and so it sucked up the nutrients and was super productive, grew really fast, really tall, and uh, a ton of fruit came out. So it was kind of a blessing in disguise that I wasn't able to take it outside and, and let, let it ripen in the sun because it took advantage of the, the, all, the, all the benefits of growing in the greenhouse, minus the fact that there's not a lot of airflow in there, but um, the fruit is delicious. Uh, super nice strawberry jam flavor and um, really delicate, uh, really delicate texture. This thing would literally just kind of break apart in your mouth as soon as you put it into your mouth. And um, it was also juicy. Um, and it wasn't super syrupy to the point where you're like, you know, your, your teeth are getting stuck together like you're eating gum, um, which I prefer because I don't like that kind of super thick syrupy taste. Um, it's just too much for me. So Tacoma Violet had this perfect all around score in terms of size, flavor, productivity, sweetness, uh, and it is cold hardy as well. So, real, real winner here. I love the Tacoma Violet. It's a fig that I'll definitely continue to cultivate here in Seattle. Moving on to number five, Preto. Preto had a score of 27.5. It's a single crop fig. Taste is nine. That's pretty high. Sweetness is 8.5. Size is five at 41 grams. And then productivity at five. 
total at 27.5. So I consider the, the Preto like the little brother to the Black Madeira, and the Black Madeira is tops in my book. Um, there's a lot of similarities between the two figs. Preto seems to ripen a little bit earlier here in Seattle, and um, the taste isn't as good, but it's not far off. Texture is really similar. Juiciness of the fig is really similar. It's also another one of those figs that kind of tastes like strawberry jam. Um, just a little bit more rich. Really like this fig. Uh, and I, I believe the Preto Black Madeira, um, Violetta, uh, Bass's favorite, Calderona, those kind of all fall into that kind of same category. They look, taste, Kind of feel similar, even the leaves look kind of similar, a lot of single lobe leaves on there. So yeah, th those I feel like they're, you can lump them all into the same category, but Preto is really good. And Little Brother to the Black Madeira, ranked at number five. Okay, moving on to number four, this is the LSU Tiger. LSU Tiger came in at a total surprise for me. Um, I bought it as a Calderwood unknown fig, later ID'd as a LSU Tiger. Uh, this is a one crop fig. Taste I put at 8.75. Sweetness at 8. Size at 4, with 35 grams. And then productivity at 2, was a super productive but decent. Total at 22.75. Total score of um, 22.75. Anyhow, this fig is amazing. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. It's a beautiful red fig. The interior of it was kind of like this flamey orange red, super juicy looking, um, and just a beautiful fig to look at, touch and hold, because it, it had this firmness about it. But when you bit into it, it was super juicy. It was like eating strawberry jam with like a gusher of a skin that was um, very refreshing. It was, it was like nectar from like a peach or something like that and that would flow over your tongue. Every time I thought about eating this LSU Tiger, I was thinking, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm in bliss. It was total Nirvana. So the LSU Tiger coming in at number four, very good thing. Number three, I put number three as the Vincenzo Briva. Now this thing came in at a score of 23. Um, it's supposed to have two crops and the one that I tasted was the Briva. I didn't see a main crop on the street. Uh, I had taste at 8.5. Sweetness at eight, size at six. It was 55.5 grams, so it was a medium, medium-sized fig. And the productivity at 0.5 because I didn't get a lot of fruit off of this tree, um, which meant there was one fruit for every two branches on this. Total score of 23. Uh, so this is a great Breba thing. So, folks here in the Northwest, you know, if you're looking for a good Breba, the Vincenzo is amazing. Um, it would have had a higher score had it been more productive, but in terms of taste and flavor and juiciness, ranked right up there. Uh, I wouldn't call this really a, a true strawberry jam fig, but it's something that was kind of a melt in your mouth type of fig. It had skin and a nice bite, but the flesh of it just literally just fell apart, and melted in your mouth, uh, and coated your tongue, and, and it was really memorable, sweet, juicy, and um, real delicate, uh, so it's like it's like eating like a honeydew, except really soft and would just melt in your mouth. I really enjoyed it. Vincenzo, number three, number two, Golden Riverside. Well, the, the, the one, at least the one that I have here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, Golden Riverside has a great story behind it. You know, we bought it from a person down in Santa Cruz. He's since moved, so I no longer have access to any more trees or cuttings, um, but fortunately my brother and I uh, have one each. So, ranks number two. It's a one crop fig, taste is nine and a half, sweetness at eight and a half, size at seven, so it's 60 grams, in total 32, score of 32. So one of the highest scores here on this list was my Golden Riverside. Um, this fig is amazing. It lasted the uh, the cold winter that we had that killed all the birch trees here in, in Washington, or a good majority of them. Uh, and it was still super productive, pushed out a ton of fruit. And if you let it ripen perfectly, 
This was like a marriage between a black Madeira mixed in with a Peter's honey, um, which is amazing. The, the flavor was really good. The taste is really good. Yet it, it re retained some of that juiciness, or a lot of juiciness, that um, would leave you a really nice mouthfeel. Really rich fig as well. So, Golden Riverside at number two. And for the number one fig, you probably guessed it, it's gonna be Black and Bear. Um, there's a lot of different strains out there, and uh, I I don't know what I was trying to do uh, a couple years ago where I was just buying Black Madeira from different sources just to compare them all. I had some from UC Davis, some from uh, KK, Figurific, you know, all those guys. And I, I just like Black Madeira. And the reason is, is it's a really good fig. Black Madeira came in at a score of 28.5, lower than the Golden Riverside, but not in terms of taste, but just in terms of like, productivity and size so uh, you know it's up to you to weigh what category is more important size productivity taste or sweetness so in terms of taste I had this thing at 11 off the chart out of 10 sweetness is eight and a half size was four and then productivity at five with this total score of 28 and a half so black Madeira is going to be number one for me it's so unique, so different, so tasty. Sweetness is not, it's just perfect. The Black Madeira is, it's not a, it's not like eating a food, it's, it's an experience when you eat it. Because, just talking about it is making my mouth water. <laughs> um, because, I don't know, it's, it, there's just something so unique about the Black Madeira. It's, uh, it's so flavorful and rich and sweet. And, you know, it's kind of like one of those strawberry jammy types but also very juicy. Um, you know, I had the Genovese Nero. It was so syrupy and thick that it made me think about like, okay, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm eating something like strawberry jam out of the jar. Black Madeira was like strawberry jam that was still being mixed, you know, or still kind of, I don't know, it was still retained some of that freshness and taste and flavor that um, made it so that you, know, you couldn't get sick of it. It was so good. Um, the other reasons why Black Madeira ranked really high is that it's super productive. Each branch is going to be loaded with fruit, um, and it's reliable. I wouldn't even consider this a late fig because it ripened for me uh, at the beginning of October, end of September time frame, so that's awesome. Not a late fig at all. It ripens in time. Um, would I grow it outside? Maybe. You know, I've talked with a, a friend here in the West Washington area, and you know, he's considering growing it outside. I don't know what it, the witchers are going to do to the uh, tree, but it is a single crop fig, and so it grows fruit on the new wood versus old wood. So, our, you know, if the old wood got, let's say, damaged in the wintertime, that's not a problem because the fruit grows on the new wood. Um, but I, I don't know. Like I said, I told him probably won't do too well without some kind of protection because if you think about my uh, Chicago Hardy this year, it actually didn't ripen at all. It, didn't, it pushed out fruit, but didn't ripen, and that guy was in ground. Um, it's not in the perfect area with you know, a lot of heat, but um, I would consider a Black Madeira a little bit more delicate than a Chicago Hardy, and so putting it in ground might not be a good thing for it. Um, anyhow, Black Madeira, number one on this year's list. Also number one on last year's list. Super productive, super tasty totally worth all the time and effort. If you can get a Black Madeira, just do it. Don't even waste your time. It's going to be the best fig in your garden, and it's, it's worth the effort. You know, if you have to bring it in for the winter, and it's the only plant that you do it for, totally worth it. Anyhow, that's my list for 2017 as far as the best tasting figs here in the Seattle area. It's going to be different for everybody else, right? But uh, this is Zone 8B. If you're anywhere within this kind of zone, then uh, this list is perfect for you. Thanks, you guys. Uh, I appreciate you tuning in for another video. If you like it, please subscribe. I'm trying to push out good content every single week. And uh, my slowdown towards the wintertime is a little hard to garden um, when it's snowing. So, if anything, it picks up again in the spring. Bye-bye.